The sunrise is spectacular on this December morning in southwestern Arizona. But even at this early hour, dozens of biologists, veterinarians, and handlers are gearing up to help a very endangered species along its road to recovery. You guys will go with that animal wherever it goes. So you'll follow the animal to the trailer, you'll follow it out to the pen, make sure everything just, and if you don't have it complete, just say wait to everybody. The species in question is the Sonoran pronghorn. It's a smaller, distinct subspecies of the American pronghorn, and today about 30 of the animals will make the transition from captivity to being released into the wild. We're moving pronghorn from the Sonoran pronghorn captive breeding facility in Ajo to um, a new area. It's going to be the third population of Sonoran pronghorn that uh, we hope to established in Arizona. And we're very excited about this because there's a couple million acres of habitat that they can expand into and uh, hopefully the population will grow. The population needs to continue to grow if it's going to survive. The Sonoran pronghorn was first put on the endangered species list in 1967. But when the devastating drought of 2002 hit this area, its numbers crashed to only 21 animals. That's when state and federal wildlife agencies built this square mile enclosure and began a captive breeding program to try to save the species. One by one, the animals that have been designated for transport are singled out and captured with a net. The vets and handlers then work quickly to help reduce stress on the high-strung pronghorn. Ear tagger, ear tag. And what can seem chaotic Where's my stretchers? is actually a well-orchestrated operation made up of Arizona Game and Fish, U.S. Fish and Wildlife, Bureau of Land Management, the U.S. military, and other wildlife agencies all working together to give these animals the best chance of survival. Basically, uh, we're giving them all the vaccines they need, rabies, uh, blue tongue, and clostridium infections. We'll give them antibiotics, anti-inflammatories, pain medication, and um, a dewormer uh, as well. And again, just trying to stabilize them in this initial handling phase until we can, until we can get them in the trailer where once they're in the dark and calm and with their friends, they're happy again. The trailers are new and specially designed to help the nervous pronghorn handle being transported. They're air conditioned, padded, and dark. On an annual basis, we have uh, animals that are basically in excess of what we want in the pen, so we remove them and uh, take them to where we think they'll do the most good in the wild. Because our objective is not to have captive animals in a pen, but to take the excess animals and release them into the wild, hopefully you know, creating new populations along the way. For several weeks prior to the capture, the pronghorn have been fed in these round pens called bomas, able to come and go as they please. The only thing different today is that someone closed the gate. They are hoping to capture and move 16 female and 14 male pronghorn. A few extras that were basically in the wrong place at the wrong time have their health assessed and then are released back into the large recovery pen. Well, they're fed here every day, so they're in great shape coming out of the pen. Um, they're fed a not only an alfalfa supplement, they have natural desert to eat on, and they're fed a pelleted ration, a ration so they can get up all the groceries and minerals and vitamins they need. We just help them get a little farther down the road. Before noon, the trailers pull out of the Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge and head to their new location. It's a large holding pen on the Berriam Goldwater Range north of Ajo. Sonoran pronghorn are the fastest land animal in North America and can clock speeds up to 60 miles per hour. But with all the people and cameras, these pronghorns seem a little hesitant about their new home. 
they will stay in this large pen for a few weeks to acclimate to the conditions. Then the fence will come down and they'll be free to go. So the populations may go up or down, but you know, by spreading our pronghorn populations out, we're hopefully avoiding another disaster like we experienced in 2002, where it didn't rain and, and, the, and the one population that we had nearly went extinct. Sonoran pronghorn are found in only two places in the world, northern Mexico and southwestern Arizona. Early settlers to this area called them prairie ghosts because their coloring and lightning speed made them seem to disappear into the landscape. Fortunately, thanks to the work of a lot of people willing to put in the time and effort, their numbers in the wild have risen from a low of 21 to about 300 animals today, making it unlikely the Sonoran pronghorn will disappear from this landscape anytime soon.